Join us every weekend for the 2021 AFL Final Series, live on the True Footy YouTube channel. G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy following a tumultuous round of prelim finals. Probably not the, the most close or exciting games, but still huge and really, really interesting nonetheless, just because of the, the narrative side of things. I was actually in attendance at the Friday night game between Melbourne and Geelong, and it was funny to me the next day at work where I'd sort of come in and people were saying, oh gee, what a shit prelim that was. But I guess you could probably argue that on the basis of if you were looking for a close prelim to go right to the end, then yes, it probably wasn't the most exciting if you were sitting at home watching it on TV, but the atmosphere of that game was absolutely incredible and it genuinely felt like a party the entire time. I absolutely loved it. I've been I've been saying the D's are the team to beat for you know most of the season this year. So, you know, a little selfish part of me was felt a little bit vindicated to see them make the grand final. And then on top of that, of course, you know, their fans were going through some hard times, particularly against Geelong, so I thought you know, the narrative around that was quite beautiful as well. Got some long-suffering Melbourne fans, you know. Seemed like most of the neutral fans in Perth got around the Demons, and that's why it really felt like a Melbourne home game in that atmosphere. But in today's video, obviously, there's going to be no just the tips this week with a pre-grand final buy. So I just thought I'd give you a video, sort of my general thoughts on the prelims, both of the games, and more or less come up with five genuine takeaways I've got from this round. Like I said, two incredible prelims in terms of the performances we saw from what I think you could definitely say have been the best two teams all year. After that Melbourne game, I thought there is daylight between Melbourne and the next best side. And then the Bulldogs turned out that amazing performance, beating Port Adelaide by 71 points. Definitely didn't see it coming. I did correctly tip the Bulldogs, but to roll Port Adelaide by 71 points, definitely did not see that coming. We'll start off the first thing on the list, and I will say that Max Korn has well and truly buried his Geelong demons. Now there's, there's a pun in there somewhere, you can work it out. But it was already something that was kind of talked about, you know, in round 23 where Max Gorn took the mark, kicked the goal after the siren to bury Geelong at GMHBA. They claimed the minor premiership and that was seen to be his sort of redemption from the start of 2018 where he, you know, missed with about 30 seconds to go and Melbourne ended up losing narrowly. But he's just put a really emphatic exclamation mark on this little redemption arc to not only claim the minor premiership with a goal after the siren, but then to turn out probably his best performance of his career, kicking five goals, four of them in the third term, where they absolutely buried the Cats. He also had 19 possessions and 33 hitouts as well. Some of the goals he kicked were unbelievable. That goal on the run from outside 50, that was sensational. And I think there was an even better one where he grabbed it out of the contest, right up against the boundary, snaps it over his left shoulder. He could do absolutely no wrong. It was an absolute joy to watch, and I'll admit I was going for Melbourne, so it made it a little bit more fun. But while the Cats didn't play particularly well, it was just incredible to see the Demons just cut them apart. In particular, at the ground, it was really obvious how well Melbourne were running and spreading from the contest. They'd get the ball, they'd release the handball, and suddenly they just had numbers in space. And ultimately, Geelong, who off the boil completely, they had no chance of catching up with Melbourne. And it was an incredible third term. I think it was like eight goals to nothing. It truly was a massive flex by the Demons. And it was also kind of poetic that it was the scene where they were smashing a prelim themselves three years previous. They've returned to the scene of the crime put in an equally good performance. In fact, I would say this Melbourne side, if they win the flag, is looking like it could be one of the best premiership teams I've ever seen. But we'll put a pin in that for now because we'll see how things go in the grand final. The second thing I learned from the prelim finals is that the Bulldogs perfectly espouse the old cliche, any team, anywhere. Their ability to win big finals despite being the underdog or you know not qualifying for the top four, it's incredible to think that this team could end up with two flags in five years potentially and not have made the top four in that time. But their ability to win these finals, you know, of course, in the first week of 2016, they smashed the Eagles in Perth. Then they beat the Hawks at the MCG coming off their three-peat. They went to Sydney to beat the Giants and then play the Swans at the MCG, which is not their traditional home ground anyway, winning the flag from seventh. This year, they're kind of replicating that. You know, they had a home final against Essendon more or less taken away from them by COVID. That game became, you know, obviously a neutral game down in Launceston and, you know, they not only won, but absolutely put Essendon to the sword. And they overcame the Lions by a single point in what was a phenomenal game that we had on the live stream a couple of weeks back. The grit and determination to win that game was incredible of them by itself. And to back that up 
against Port Adelaide in Adelaide, a team that had beaten them some four weeks previous when, you know, they had the adversity of, you know, not being able to train. They've, they've been on the road this entire final series. While I tipped an upset, I was still pretty shook by, you know, the emphatic response from the Bulldogs. And that is a mark of a truly great team, the teams that win in the face of adversity. And I've got full belief that the Bulldogs definitely can win the premiership. And to be honest, it is great to see in some senses. I was really disappointed for them to miss out on the top four because I thought it wasn't a fair indication of, of where they were at as a club. I think they would have been one of the best teams this year. Unlucky not to beat Geelong in Geelong early this year. And obviously that would have you know had them in the top four. It was a really poor finish to the season for them, but it wasn't a true reflection of who they are as a footy team. And it just goes to show that quite often the best teams will win when it matters in September. The third thing I learned from the prelims is that unfortunately Port Adelaide more or less vindicated some of the criticisms that people had over them through the course of the year. They've obviously been really high on the ladder all year, winning 17 games and losing five, but their record against the best teams, you know, they had home losses in Adelaide to Melbourne, Geelong and the Bulldogs, and they've also lost to the Lions in that time. It was that lack of head-to-head -head performance against the best teams that had people, including myself, doubting them a little bit on the big stage in September. They changed people's perception in the final round against the Dogs in Melbourne, but I think it's fair to say upon reflection, the Dogs were just horribly out of form and when the dogs are up and about, we saw what happened in that prelim. Which is not to say that the dogs are 71 points better than Port Adelaide. They just had an absolute stinker of a game, but ultimately proved that they weren't quite on these teams level this year, in my opinion. And yes, they did beat Geelong in the first week of the finals, but again, and I don't want to sound like I'm discrediting Port too much, but you just look at the performances of Geelong around that. The win over the Giants in Perth was far from really convincing and of course they just got absolutely battered in the prelim. Port Adelaide are still a very very good team but ultimately I think this was truly evidence that they weren't quite on the top two teams level this season. Where to for them I still think they were right in the mix for it next year. The vulnerability with their list is probably some aging stars like you know, someone like a Boak, Dixon and Gray. They're not really young but then again they're also playing really good footy and of course you know the continued development of their youth. I think they're set up for a period of genuine sustained success. Whether that actually wins them a flag I have no idea. The fourth point I have about the prelims this weekend is more of a question around where Geelong's at and what do they do to lift themselves out of where they are currently. You know, the, the last three weeks, you know, their finals performances have not been convincing at all. And it sort of conjured this little narrative that Geelong was cooked, but people also then forget they did come third and make a prelim. So you can sort of make criticisms around their slow ball movement and the fact that they've got so many older players in that team. I think they fielded 11 players over 30. Yes, they looked well and truly short of the Demons in the prelim and frankly, it wasn't a great final series for them in general. But we can't just you know sweep the entire season under the rug as a total failure. They made a prelim, they were good enough to be there and genuinely were considered a genuine flag threat, especially when they were in good form early this season. A little bit came out uh, during the week that they might've been playing with the flu. I tend to believe it there's a horrible flu going around Perth so while it does sound like excuses for sure it would explain why that team got belted by 83 points in a game where they I expected them to lose and I think I tipped the Demons to win comfortably but 83 points is you know a whole different level of comfort. Geelong showed that their brand of footy is close to good enough just because they've been dubbed out at prelim I don't think it's time to throw the baby out with the bathwater so to speak there does seem to be a little bit of a trend with teams who move the ball slower under the new rules my team is a great example of that so maybe they do need to adjust some things but it's not panic stations and in terms of their list management yes they probably do need to invest a little bit in the kids but there is no need for a genuine list overhaul or rebuild especially when Geelong have proven that they're a destination club and they can trade in you know mature established talent pretty much whenever they want so when you know your Selwoods retire your Higgins your Isaac Smiths there's going to be a bit of cash for them to just sort of replenish that way anyway that being said still time to hit the draft get a few kids in and uh, maybe just start to look at a bit of a transition particularly if they don't start next season well that's not the same as a rebuild though you don't rebuild when you've just traded in the farm for jeremy cameron the final thing i learned and whether or not this is a thing that i learned or if it's just sort of you know something that i've concluded i think we genuinely have the best two teams in the grand final this year which is which is fantastic you'd love to see grand finals that way it's always nice when there's an underdog story in there but melbourne and the dogs were the best two teams for most of this season both of these teams have showed incredible grit and resilience and quite similar to last year both of these teams have been on the road obviously it was more extreme last year with richmond and geelong having been in queensland for more than half the season these guys have at least played the final series away from home and i'm really pleased that 
clearly they weren't hindered enough to you know have it ruin their season so it's been incredible from both of them and i'm so excited for the grand final just on that point i've had a few people ask whether i'm going to attend the grand final for a couple of very generous people have offered me the opportunity to get tickets through them and while i'm reluctant to make big calls because you know i could change my mind last minute but i think at this stage i'm going to commit to the live stream because i'm probably going to commit to the live stream because like the last year's grand final live stream was probably top five to 10 best days of my life. It was just so enjoyable. Uh, it's great for the YouTube channel. The views did really well. And, uh, you know, there's also a part of me that kind of doesn't want to take the seat of someone who's more passionate about Melbourne or the Bulldogs. If I was going, you know, I'd be happy for both teams to win. I'd be a bit of a neutral and I'm sure I would love it, but I think I'll leave my ticket to somebody else. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching that little video. Obviously, no Just the Tips this week with no round of football, but we will return, you know, the following week with, uh, the, you know, the grand final predictions, which is going to be a lot of fun. Going to be heaps of content, you know, between now and uh, the end of the grand final. But also, you know, past that, we go straight through the trade period. You know, the season's far from over in my eyes. But as always, guys, like hearing from you in the comments. Let me know in the comment section below what you learned from this round or what are some takeaways from this round that you think are worth discussing. As always, I'd love you guys to hit subscribe, trying to get to 15K by grand final day. But other than that, just take care of yourselves and let's try and get through this agonizing two-week period before the grand final. Stay safe, guys. I'll see you soon. Cheers.